Hello and welcome back to the series on NER and Python for the digital humanities or anyone who's interested. As with the last video, we're going to be talking about how to structure testing in your NER systems. Now this entire series is based around Spacey, and I love Spacey, but one of the major drawbacks comes to the evaluation of your models. There is not a really good built-in way to evaluate an NER model in Python. That is until I stumbled upon this amazing, amazing Medium article that goes through how to actually create a what we call a confusion matrix. And I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit. In other words, it goes through and shows you how to actually structure a more formal machine learning test using the uh, the NER model from Spacey. And uh, I'm going to be kind of, unlike my past videos, I'm not going to be doing live coding here. I'm going to be largely talking about the very handy Jupyter Notebook that came out of that Medium article by an individual named Dulaj Rajatha. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I sincerely apologize. And what I've done is, while this Jupyter Notebook is absolutely incredible, uh, it has a few problems with it, mainly because it was built around Spacey 2.0, and as my viewers know, a lot of things broke uh, when Spacey went to 3.0. So one of the things that I've done is I've brought this notebook up to date, and I'm going to be providing it for you, and um, I'm going to have proper attribution on the notebook when it's posted on, on GitHub. But I want to kind of walk through it real fast and explain what's happening uh, cell by cell. So as you've probably already familiar, you're loading in Spacey and you're loading in JSON here in our first cell. In cell two, we're structuring those load data and write data JSON files that you've seen many, many times. And uh, what we're doing here is we're just loading in that best model like we saw in the last video. And also like the last video, we're loading in a new object called docs, which is going to be the formal test JSON file, which is a selection of 500 um, already pre-annotated uh, items. And if we want to, we can print off docs 10, and you'll see that it's, it's very familiar with what you saw in the last video, the exact same stuff. Unlike the last video, in which we saw an informal test, what we're going to be doing here is doing a formal test. And a lot of these functions are coming straight from uh, the Jupyter Notebook that I cited above. However, one major thing it has changed. Uh, Spacey got rid of Spacey.gold, and instead it's been replaced with Spacey.training. And likewise, the former version of this, which was um, Bilio tags uh, from offsets, is now changed to... Uh, offsets to Bilio tags. And what these functions allow for you to do is they allow for you to take essentially this annotation style, entities uh, where each entity is marked up with the start and end position of each span with the label that corresponds. And it allows for you to convert that data into something that looks like this, where each label is given, uh, each token in a text is given a separate index in a list. And if that token is an entity, it's given the label of the entity. If it's not an entity, it's given the label of O. So it's not an entity at all. And as you can see in this example, he's working with uh, two different types of entities, attraction and country. In our uh, example here, we're only working with one entity, and that is camp. And so what these functions allow for you to do is they allow for you to go through and automatically identify the labels that are present in your uh, evaluation set. And they also allow for you to reconstruct everything into that kind of format. And then what it does is it goes through and benchmarks or actually tests the model uh, against the actual output. And so when you're working with um, kind of this evaluation method, you're looking for four main pieces of data, true positives, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. And with those pieces of information, you're able to actually evaluate your model with both precision, recall, and the F score. I'm going to have a link in the description down below because I've covered these in several different videos in the past, and I don't want to reiterate it too much right here. If we keep on going down the uh, down this Jupyter Notebook, however, what we can actually do is go through and properly evaluate everything. And if we scroll down to the very bottom, after all 500 evaluation cases, and you can see uh, what they kind of look like here with the O's, the camp, each indicating a different span. 
uh, we end up finally getting to this, a confusion matrix. And like I said, this notebook is, is fantastic because the author has already taken the care. So if you have multiple different entities, they will appear here. Here, we're just working with one entity. So every single token is either a camp or it's not a camp. And what you're looking at here are a few different nice labels on this matrix as well. Uh, you're seeing true labels and predicted labels. You know, I think I've covered in the past how to actually read a confusion matrix, but I'll go ahead and explain it right now. What you're looking at here on this side are true labels. So uh, what we're looking at is uh, there are 286 instances of camp in total, and there are 11,045 uh, instances of tokens not being anything. So essentially what you're seeing here is the degree to which we've predicted correctly or incorrectly certain labels. So we can look at this and see that we did pretty well. Like I said, this training set is built for high precision. So we want to have the model be able to identify um, true positives uh, at the expense of um, not having wrong things labeled as false positives, um, me meaning we don't want individuals who might have been victims of the Holocaust being labeled as a concentration camp. This would not be good. And so the whole purpose of this training set was to kind of err on the side of caution with that. And again, like I've said in the past, this is not a great training set. This is just a sample one that we're working with. And what we see is that we have correctly predicted 280 instances of camp and we have wrongly uh, essentially missed six instances of camp. At the same time, we have correctly identified 11,043 instances of things that were not a camp, and we have incorrectly labeled two things as camp. So what we're looking at here is a confusion matrix where we can see the, the true positives, the false positives, the true negatives and the false negatives. And so this new notebook, which I'm gonna be dropping on the GitHub repo is, I can't even begin to describe to you how helpful this blog was. It's really, really helpful for being able to structure a formal test. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to oftentimes fine tune hyperparameters in an NER model and do maybe 100 or 200 different training uh, models uh, that are trained at different times. And then what you're going to do is you're going to benchmark all of those models against the same training set and then select maybe the one that performs the best or the one that shows the best for what you want, what metrics, what metric that you want to have, be it uh, precision, be it uh, recall or be it F score. So that's all I'm going to really talk about in this video because I don't want to do too much live coding and take away from this author's uh, work. Instead, I'm going to provide a link in the description down below, but I hope I've kind of explained what this notebook is and why it's valuable and how you can take that notebook and use what I've done here modified it for Spacey 3.0, and now actually have um, a good baseline for structuring your own formal tests with your NER systems. That's going to be it for this video. Like always, uh, thanks to everyone who supports this channel, specifically my Patreons. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe down below. And if you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon. I try to keep everything I do free for the whole public so that everyone has the same access to the same material.